So just a cut there to uh, <coughs> change which one I was uh, I'm working on, and let's just set up the scene for a game capture of two and and we need this one and there we go let us get going on 7 max episode 2 and yes I really do want to start a new game right away or at our earliest convenience. Wait, I've been itching to bust some skulls since they canceled my so-called life. Oh, Max. Uh, let's see what... <laughs> Make the best scene. <laughs> Answer machines are gone. <laughs> Hold on a second while I uh, just pull up chat again. Oh, no, no, more answering machine. Okay. So That's gotta go turn that down again. I'll try to remember to do this next time we play. Uh, let's uh, go back and uh, head back to the game now. Just don't want to be able to hear them. Go in the box. Well, that's a must be game on soul. Let's throw that out. I'm saving it for a science experiment. Do that, little buddy. Okay, what's going to be new? Because in the first season, I'm not sure if anything new occurred. Like, no new. Is that at all? That's not.
ready cultures there. It makes for an unwieldy but also enchanting one that fell my first place in the long jack. He howled like a sick wallaby when I shaved it off him. We should have Jesse James's hand appraised one of these days. I bet it's especially valuable because it's autographed. Okay, um, that's new. I don't want to talk to Sam right now. Uh, let's see, is there anything on uh, television? Welcome back, America, to day three and a half of my most special episode ever. You don't want to miss any of our exciting <coughs> guests coming up this hour. Plus, everyone in the audience is going to be getting a lifetime supply of non dairy creamer. We don't need non dairy creamer. We need sleep. Oh, I see. You were all thrilled when I gave you cars, then all spent paid vacations, and then home entertainment centers. But now, after I worked so hard and sacrificed so much, you'd rather sleep? It's all about you, isn't it? I guess nothing I ever do is good enough for you. Maybe. Maybe we'll start using non dairy creamer. Someday. That's more like it. You see, there's lots more fun to, lots more fun to come, so stick around, America, and sit up straight. Nobody trusts a flounder. Good old TV. It's the only way I still feel well adjusted. Okay. Um, what is. Mr. Spatula is looking good today. Isn't he plastic? We should She's no longer in thyroid. She's now part of the tabloid rag. Nice characters. Swarrow? Final. Hey, if you get that in ink, you could do thirty tattoos at once. If I could scare up 30 customers at once, I'd still be in the tattoo business. Okay. Let's see what Sybil has to say. Anything new? Sam! Max! How nice to see you! I don't suppose you have any candid photos of little green men feeling frisky, do you? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna say yes. Yes. By which I mean, huh? It's my new career! I'm a tabloid publisher specializing in the thoughtful analysis of groundbreaking news of interest to myself and others like me. What's it going? Alien love triangle time. There's nothing like good, hard-nosed women. <coughs> you said it. It's time to find out the real answers to the real questions. What did those poor cattle do to deserve that? So, what do aliens do for romance? Do they love? How do they get their otherworldly thrills? <sighs> Playing slots in Kino? That'd explain why they're always seen in Nevada. Have you learned anything interesting since you started this uh, magazine? Learned why Elvis had such an otherworldly voice. Elvis was not an alien. Sure he was. He just wore makeup to cover his emerald green skin. Frankly, sir, well, this project is disturbing, as well as distressingly intimate. Like seeing Stephen King getting a hot butter massage. <laughs> you saw last week's issue. <laughs> oh God. <sighs> okay. Is anybody else in the room that we might not know about? Doctor Phil. Well, that goes without saying. Is anybody else in the room that we might not know about? Yes. How very unspecific. Is anybody else in the room that we might not know about? Okay, so it's looping. What was it you said about a photo? I need tabloid, the alien love triangle times, needs a cover photo of an extraterrestrial biological entity, or alien as the unwashed masses call them, caught getting cozy with some of the locals. Sybil, I'd like the record to show that although I support you as a friend, your latest project makes my skin decidedly crawl. Me too, and I like it. 
Are you a publisher now? What happened to Psycho <coughs> I've always had a fascination with the suppressed and sensual, and for telling people too much about books. Publishing the Alien Love Triangle Times is a logical extension of all my previous careers. Except maybe that of a spokesperson. Are you doing any psychotherapy on the side? Only on space aliens. Guess that narrows your clientele quite a bit. No, not really. How about a quick analysis? For old time's sake. Oh, all right. Think of a number between one and four. Three and a half. Three and a half. Sounds like inverse paranoia to me. What don't you mean by that? Mm-hmm. I thought so. All right. We'll be back. Keep watching the supply. <laughs> okay. Mimeograph? This appears to be some sort of reproductive device. It's a mimeograph. I use it to print my tabloid. She's got a story here about two hygienists, two hygienists <laughs> from Walla Walla and an amorphous Saturnian slime molder. Is that the one where they walk into a bar at the beginning? Conjumat. But you're close. Um... Very convenient if you haven't got a bulletin board. Let's get out of here. Let's go see what pa Bosco's current paranoia is. Alien Love Triangle Times. Looks like they're sold out. Has been Brady Culture behind bars. Finally found a way to become famous. The police blotter. So it's in the gumball machine. Looks like candy, but I'm pretty sure it's fish tank gravel again. I've had worse. What the? You're probably wondering how I know your name. Not really. <laughs> it's me, Bosco. <laughs> oh, Bosco. What's with the slanted soup strainer, Bosco? Bosco? I know not that much. Uh, I am Lord Reginald Rumpelbottom, Earl of Dukedom. Sam, what language is he speaking? Not sure, Max, but I think it might be English. <laughs> no, really. What made you convert to British? It's because everybody's got an in for me, that's why. Yeah, we heard. I had to get a disguise to throw them off the trail. Oh, they'll never find me now. They wouldn't even know where to begin to look. Sure, the fact that your shirt says Bosco on it. What sick forces of evil are bedeviling you this time? The skin bodies, man! They're after me! Skin bodies? Sounds like a pack of belligerent nudists. <laughs> the skin bodies are like skinheads, but ten times worse! Two they're not a hundred times worse? Yeah, maybe a hundred times, maybe a million! These skin bodies, what exactly are they doing to you? They're stealing my, I mean... My shaving cream! All the things of yours they could pinch, why the shaving cream? So they can shave their bodies, of course. Of course. Not to be rude, but why isn't your fancy pants defense system stopping these skin bodies? Well, after the whole video delivery conspiracy, I figured I'd better build something to keep people from bringing stuff into my store. So? So? I needed to borrow some of the high-tech detective parts from B-Tech. Meaning nothing stopping people from taking stuff out of the store anymore. That's it all! I knew I forgot something! 
Let's see if we can. Uh... Well, there is still one kind of shaving cream the blue skin bodies haven't got yet. Oh, yeah, I love shaving. That's funny. I've never seen you shave. Didn't mean myself. Uh, <laughs> I have a most peculiar device behind the counter. What's it this week? What peculiar device are you so eager to pawn off on us this time? It's the latest in Bosco tech innovation. A delightful invention I like to call a chemical-based voice modulator. Voice modulator? What's that? I do believe it's self-explanatory. Don't really have time to explain it to ourselves. Why don't you just explain it to us? Uh, it alters the frequency of your voice box. Very, very good. See how much he wants for it. Like that voice modulator. That will be 30 shillings. Yeah, I left our shillings in my other pants. How much in dollars? Let's see. Uh, Thirty shillings would be about one million American dollars. A million bucks? No way are we giving out that many tickets. I think we'll have to find an entirely new revenue stream if we want that voice modulator. Worth every shilling. We'll take your last can of shaving cream, old chap. Ticker people, just bring it to the car. I'm good for us right now. Thanks, boss girl. Honey nut chip. What's this? That's a shelf. Uh, I think I might need this sledging machine. Probably could just walk out with it, but I think we'll just go to her. Let's go see you at the television studio. Where are we going, Sam? TV studio. Well, here we are, Max. A TV station with programs too old to be contemporary, too new to be retro, but consistently derivative enough to be popular. WARP. Television so mindless, you can't help but watch. Utterly quiet in here. Mysteriously so. Well, let's find this Myra character and smack some good old-fashioned sense into her. I don't care if we smack it into her or smack it out of her, just so long as there's smacking involved. You crack me up, everybody. Hold on. This door will be locked and the camera as well switched on for an impromptu reality show. Yeah. Okay. Barrel Haven set. The Barrel Haven. From whence comes this storybook set? Clearly from a work of unparalleled artistic vision and emotional expressiveness. No wonder I haven't seen it. Stand aside, casually attired stagehand. We're Sam and Max, freelance police. We've come to save some pathetic hostages from the clutches of... Okay, we'll stop you right now. Number one, I'm not a stagehand. I am the director. The director! But a fool. Number two, we're no longer holding the audition for animal pops with crippling mental disabilities and a lust for dance. Oh no, we're not actors. You got that right. I don't think I've ever seen worse acting in my entire life. And yes, I have seen Keanu Reeves' performance in Toast, the musical. <laughs> and I think my hypersensitive ego made me stroking. Oh, look at me. Back! Who's next? You don't seem to understand. We are highly untrained police officers. Look, hats off for dedication, guys. But I'm just not buying the police act. 
feel so intelligent. We're looking for Myra Stump, the darling hawk of... Do not mention that name in my presence. Which name? Myra or Stump? Either and or both. What's your beef with Myra? Let's just say Myra and I have creative differences. I'm creative and she isn't. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was your question? You and Myra, why the hate? Look, Myra runs her show her way, and I run every other show my way. If she doesn't want me on her set, I could care less. You mean you couldn't care less? If you could care less, then you do care some, which doesn't really... No, I was right. I could care less, because I care even less about what you're saying right now. Oh, burn! Wait, no, <laughs> What are you doing here, anyhow? What am I doing here? I'm holding auditions for Midtown Cowboys. What are you doing here? Midtown Cowboys? The critically panned but publicly adored sitcom about two cattle ranchers trying to make it in Midtown Manhattan? Yes, well summarized. Hiring extras? No, I'm hiring the star. The two main characters went on Myra a couple days ago and I haven't heard from them and heard from them since. I need replacements. Hey. Damn, did you hear that? If we can pass one lousy audition, sitcom startup will finally be ours! Pocketing to fame for the most insubstantial of reasons. That truly is the American dream. The satire. Oh, the satire. You'd like to apply for that instant stardom you promised? You want to audition? If there were anybody else here, I'd tell you to forget it, but okay. All right! What do we do? I'm going to have you play a scene from Old Yeller. Tell me you've seen it. I'm not into horror movies. It's a classic boy gets dog, dog gets rabies, boy shoots dog story. Max, I want you to play the boy. Yes, boy! He's so mean. Sam, you play the dog. Oh. Okay, Sam, ready? I need you to act like you've got full-blown rabies. Understand? It's my motivation. You're a mad dog. Now. Show me that. Um, uh, no, dig deep. You should be just I don't have anything. What are you doing? Sorry, I'm not hiring a dog who can't even do a simple rapidity scene. I don't know what went wrong. I was feeling so rapid. I have to you come back for that. Written to me. Come back after you've taken a few thousand hours in walking. Once used for apples, now used for derrieres. And nothing else. And I've got to go back. There's nothing here. Channel 33 and a third. Ugh. Okay, so... Yeah, I need the shaving cream. Who goes there? Oh, it's you, Lock. Could use a shave. I'll say. Your five o'clock shadow goes clear to your ankles. Oh, dog. Hey, dog. Hey, dog. The skin body rule is sick. Black. What a slimy bout. The little bladder did it again. After him. I mean. Tally ho, boo. Why did I think it would be that easy? Where are we going, Sam? <laughs> the skin body can't be stopped! 
those rats. Take out a gun. Wait for the next one. Missed it. Almost. Get it right as the Okay, hold on tight, little butt. Jimmy just can't win. Okay, so let's go back to the uh Where are we going, Sam? TV studio. TV studio. Hello, Ben. Yeah. Can we take another crack at that audition? Fine. Let's take it from the top. Ready, Sam? Show me rabbit. Thank you. Thank you. First off, I'd like to thank all the little people. Please get that to me. Okay, Max. Just realize your dog is walking down, and you'll have to put him down for the good of the world. Really? You're sad. You're despondent. You're British. No! Who, who? You call that emotion? I see Myra show more emotion, and she ought to be declared an act of Botox reserve. Great fight, Sam. Give me three. And this one's pretty easy. Dear guess. <laughs> Perfect. Now, the fateful moment has arrived. Despite your immense grief, you must put your beloved companion out of his misery. Okay. Oh. Hey, what demonic force possessed you to do that? Demonic force called acting, Sam. You can try us at times. Good thing I had my anti-hypnosis helmet built into my head. Oh. Or I'd have one too many holes in my head. What? Hold on a second. Bravo. Such authenticity. I was convinced that should you were be a bit actually better. shooting him. How did you do the sound effects? You don't want to know. The search for the Midtown Cowboys is over. You're hired. Head to the set next door and we can begin filming immediately. Let's hurry, Sam. We only have 14 minutes and 55 seconds of fame left. Okay, so Midtown Cowboys. All right, people, let's get the stage set up. The celebrity host will be here any minute. Oh, right. The crew's working on Myra. Stupid, no talent, fat face. Weren't you just? I think she just defied the laws of physics. Sorry, you'd be amazed how many times a day I have to do that. Things tend to be hectic here. Doesn't bother us a bit. 
Sam and Max, consummate professional actors, reporting for duty. <laughs> you said duty, Sam. I knew you guys were right for the show. Speaking of which, could you perhaps explain the show a bit? Okay, here's the drill. On Midtown Cowboys, you play a pair of cattle ranchers trying to raise a herd in an apartment in Manhattan. My Uncle Ernie did that, except it was pigs. And not in an apartment. I only see one cow. It's a small herd. You're struggling, okay? Okay. You've got this landlord, Mr. Featherly, who has a very strict no-cows policy. Devilishly inconvenient. I begin to see from whence the hilarity sprouts. Yes, Featherly is always barging in, and you try to hide the fact that you have a cow in the apartment. Lots of sight gags, usually something gross winds up happening. Simple enough? Great. Where's the script? Well, there's a slight hitch. The cow ate most of the script, so you're going to have to ad-lib the show. Ad-lib? Yes, make it up as you go. Improvise. Well, I guess our regular life has given us plenty of practice. Don't worry, you'll be working with Philo Pennyworth, who plays Featherly. He's a brilliant actor, classically trained. Globe Theater and all that. Just set him up to do something funny and he'll handle it from there. Check. Anything else? Actually, yes. We did save one line from the script, and it's really important to work it in, because it's the product placement that pays for the whole show. One of you will have to save the line. Me, me, pick me! All right, Max, your line is this. Better get the serious toothpaste. I like it already. Um. Okay, let's start taping. We're as ready as we're ever gonna be. Let's start taping the show. Okay, now remember, your landlord's at the door, and you don't want him to know you've got a cow in there. Ready? Action! They probably had it a cow. Open up in there! I know you're hiding a cow. Let there be light. Hey! Oh, and a cow. Open up in there. I know you're hiding a cow. There we go. Life of the party. Hey! Aha! I know you've got a. Well, 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 who's your guest, boys? Our chef. This is the French chef we hired to satisfy our inexplicable, insatiable craving for omelets and duck all around. <laughs> and frog's legs. I like mine extra crispy. Oh, a French chef, eh? I love French bread and, and French fries. I went to Gay Paris one time myself, you know. It was back in my army day. <laughs> okay, um... The plate. Goodness, who left this lying here? He said Camus. It's a very short French tone poem entitled The Pen of My Aunt is on the Dresser of My Uncle. Except in French. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm just not sure where we're going with this. Can we start again? But <sighs> let's get the set back the way it was. Okay. Go and see her and say... Let's start taping. Let's have another go at that scene, shall we? See if you can squeeze in some gross-out humor this time. Ready? Action! <laughs> There. I know you're hiding a cow. Get the plate. Hey! I'm walking back there. Let's get the plate. Goodness, who left this Open line up. here? Open up, oh, lampshade. I know there you're light. hiding a cow. Hey! Take the lampshade. Open up! And. 
Shut up in there. There we go. I know you're Life hiding. of the party. Aha! I know you've got a... Well, well, well! Who's your guest, boys? This is the French chef we hired to satisfy our inexplicable, insatiable craving for omelets and duck a la <laughs> And frog's legs. I like mine extra crispy. Oh, a French chef, eh? I love French bread and, and French fries. I went to Gay Paris one time myself, you know. It was back in my army days. If I'm not mistaken, I need to do this. Say, what's this? <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that you said? He said, move goo guy pan. It's a French dish the chef has just made. Whoa! Super! I'll try some of that! Where's the plate? Can't help but feel this is all terribly wrong somehow. Ah! Hmm. Interesting. That's one word for it. Hmm. There's a familiar flavor. Fennel, maybe? Kentucky bluegrass, I think. This moo moo whatever stuff is really good. Uh, what's it called in English? Cow pie. Really? Well, that's funny. It sounds just like. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Now? <clears throat> Better get the serious toothpaste. Zoom in. And cut. Really? Oh, comic cool. The network is going to love it. Naturally. I'll be in my dressing room refreshing my muse. Don't call me for at least an hour. Nice work, you guys. Here's a clip for your reel. Thanks. <sighs> Let's get the set back the way it was. Yeah, let's go to the cooking show. What's the story with this show? Cooking Without Looking? It's a cooking show aimed at motorhead bachelors who have never seen the inside of a grocery store. Is there a big demand for that? You'd be amazed. How do you do that teleportation trick where you're always everywhere ahead of us? Trade secret, honey. How do you keep it so clean in here? Complete absence of anything resembling food is helpful. Aren't there fruits or vegetables of any sort around here? Just the crew. <laughs> I never get tired of that one. Okay, actually, no. We strive for realism, and the average bachelor kitchen doesn't contain any natural plant life except mold. Where's the host? Is he in watching the Myra show? No, he's one of the few who isn't. He got food poisoning while he was taping last week's show. Right in the middle, in fact. Was it gruesome? Yes, and unfortunately, this show goes out live. Can we get a tape of the show? This one? No, it's broadcast live. We don't tape it. See ya. Probably. Okay, so the town cowboys is the chairman of the smorgasbord. Oh, some of the puns. Okay. 
Okay. The game show door. Look, Max, there's the door to Myra's set. Let's get in there and liberate her literally captive audience. Sam, forget the hostages. There's somebody famous. It's Hugh Bliss. Who Bliss? No, Hugh Bliss. Inventor of prismatology? Help millions unlock the power of their personal color spectrums? Right. The stage magician turned happiness guru. Like we didn't have enough of those already. I want to meet him. Fine. But if he magically pulls another rainbow butterfly out of somebody's ear, I'm leaving. Hi, Hugh Bliss. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. Yeah, we know. And you are Sam and Max, freelance police. <gasps> How do you know? Do you believe in magic? Because I do. So, Hugh Bliss, what brings you to WARP? I too am here to meet Myra. <gasps> How do you know we came for Myra? Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, don't you see? I can read your mind. As the resident Doubting Thomas of this crime-fighting duo, I consider it my, ci my civic duty to say, prove it. Okay, think of something, anything. Six million three hundred seventy-three thousand four hundred eleven point nine eight. Sam? Lucky guess. Was it? Think of something else. Hugh Bliss is a big fat charlatan. Was he right? Big deal. Everyone thinks that. Oh? Think of something else. <laughs> Pennies on the eyes of a dead mime. Well? They must have been silently mouthing the words. Really? Think of something else. <laughs> Enough of this ridiculous farce. Stop it. <laughs> do me. Do me. Oh, oh my. And that's unspeakably <laughs> depraved. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Wow, <coughs> you're amazing. Uh, let's see what magic is. Dazzle us with a feat of ledger domain, why don't you? Okay, I'll show you the magic of prismatology in action. Pick a color, any color. Ochre, ochre, no, mauve, bird sienna. Uh, how about a color I've heard of, hmm? Pick a color, as long as it's red, green, or blue. Let's go with red. Red, Fred. I know what you're thinking. Is it real or is it illusion? I challenge you to change colors again. Okay, pick a color. Any color. I'm sure there's supposed to be one that I'm supposed Ooh, to have. You. Oh. Say, you bliss. Can we get a picture with you for our scrapbook of instantly forgettable memories? Splendid idea. I wish I'd thought of it. Oh, and in fact, I did. He, hence the camera. Now gather round. How will you take the picture? I magic. Okay. Say chocolate covered puppies. Chocolate, chocolate covered, covered puppies. puppies. So where's the picture, magic man? Oh my. I seem to have misplaced it. <gasps> hmm. Check your pockets. Maybe I left it there. <laughs> I know he's supposed to be the uh, flaming happy magician, but this is just creepy. What's your business with Myra? I'm to be a guest on her show, silly. Yeah, silly. I'm spreading the word about my new book, Emetics, the handbook for multicolored happiness. Take a copy when you leave. Can you just give us the ten word summary instead? We're on a pretty tight schedule. Ten words. Oh my. How about prismatology is the answer. Unicorns are pretty and rainbows too. That's ten. Um, that's it. 
Sorry to interrupt your little joy fest, but I've got a situation here. Never fear, pretty lady. Hugh Bliss is here. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, our game show host went on Myra hours ago, and he still hasn't come out. Think you can fill in till he gets back? Can a butterfly fly? Yes, it can. Oh, what do I do? When a contestant comes to the podium, just read him a question from the card. Then, when he gets it wrong, insult him and tell him to get off the stage. Oh, no, no. Prismatology teaches us to love everyone, no matter what. Hey, just read the cards. Okay. I still love you. <sighs> okay, let's go see if we can win Bosco's money. Director. Sam, I've just deduced a vital piece of information in the case. That is where the director sits. People say you've been mailing it in. <laughs> Let's stand up at the podium. That's where I'd stand if I were the host, which I'm not. Okay. We've got a contestant, people! Hit it! From somewhere deep within the bowels of WARP, it's Who's Never Going to Be a Millionaire? With special guest host, Hugh Bliss. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. Our first contestants are a pair of professional freelance police officers. They enjoy firing their guns randomly and running over, th running over things. Please welcome Sam and Max. Listen, Sam, they love us. Welcome! You know the rules. If you can answer even one question correctly, you'll walk away a millionaire! Start loading the armored cars, Hugh, because my brain's stuffed with enough worthless trivia to power a small Chilean village for decades. It's true! Okay, are you ready? Oh, happy day. It's an easy one! If a man sets out from the Horsehead Nebula in a spaceship traveling at thrice the speed of light and his father leaves from Rigel 2 at the same time going half the speed, how many nanoseconds will it be before time paradox causes the first man never to have been born? I don't get an answer. I'm gonna go with my gut and say, Hugh Bliss. I'm flattered, but no, that is completely wrong. You lose! This is an outrage. I demand a recount. We do have a fabulous consolation prize. A copy of Emetics by me, Hugh Bliss. No thanks. I'm content to leave with just my burning shame and newfound sense of inadequacy. Okay. Find out which poor schmuck will be the next to blow his chance at millions right after these messages. Now to cheat. Apparently, WARP can't afford armed guards for their game show questions. That's cheating, Sam. Good thinking. Don't get your pretty long ears in a twist, little buddy. The answers aren't on here. In life, there are no answers. Only questions. Another prismatology credo? No, I read that in a cereal box. I'm seriously deficient in riboflavin, by the way. You're seriously deficient, all right. <laughs> okay, so... Nah. Um, I don't remember how you change those. Emetics. Life troubling your digestion? Reality blocking your passages? Expel your troubles with Emetics, the handbook for multicolored happiness. Hmm. Already got a copy. I read it every morning on the can. Multicolored happiness indeed. Mm hmm. Do we put that in there? Nope. Apparently not. Oh, maybe, um... Maybe I just go here without any cards. We've got another contestant! Hit it! Oh my! The questions have vanished! Welcome back to... 
Stay in commercial, stay in commercial. More commercials. We'll be right back after this. Okay, so I've got to find another card. These are all thesauri. Who decorated this set? English majors working for peanuts, as usual. Competitive horseshoe skipping is a thrilling test of accuracy, strategy, and strength. Even more so if the horses are still attached. Some say that's the only way. Horseshoe skipping. Oh, convenient. This way we can shoot a TV show about people watching a TV show. And if the show they're watching is the show of themselves watching, the universe could fold in on itself and explode! Best leave it turned off, then. Oh, dear. Um, hold on. Hold on, what is that? Hi, Mom. I miss the 70s when you could get away with stuff like that. Oh, maybe it's in the cooking show. We can put it in the. This is quite realistic. Like that animatronic kid on the Cosby show! Have a look in the fridge. This fridge isn't even a fridge. It's a fake. And a fake shit. It's like a scene from Heidi. How does that bird manage to stay still for so long? <laughs> uh... That's quite an assortment. They must have scoured every toxic waste dump in the state. Welcome to Cooking Without Looking, the cooking show for the typical bachelor kitchen, containing no fruits, vegetables, or healthy ingredients of any sort. The show where we take a random assortment of condiments and barely edible items and create a meal within minutes. Filling in for Chuck Flagon this week, these guys. Just go with it. Oh, um, hello. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Sam. It's great to be here. Not you, Buckethead. The audience. Oh, greetings, worshipful fans. Remember, the only reason I'm on TV is because I'm better than you. We've got some furious cooking to do, so let's get right to it. What are we making, Sam? A bunch of gunk in a dish. We'll just get some ingredients from the ingredient rack and add it to what we professionals call the yummying hod. Isn't that a pot? Max, we both know a pot is what you and I fight over when we play poker. This is the yummying hod. Okay, I think we're going to go with some uranium no pellets. More than a dash of uranium pellets. They also go great in Chex Mix. Um, red dye Be number sure two. To include red dye number two. If there's not at least some possibility of malignant tumors, it's not real bachelor cooking. I want to kidneys. crush up some dried dingo kidneys. Come on, bachelors. You know you have them. Look under the sofa cushions. And, um... MSG. Every chef has a signature ingredient that no one has ever heard of or used. Mine's MSG. If you put in enough that you feel a burning sensation in the back of the neck, forearms, and chest, you're just about there. 
And then let's cook it. Now do we broil it, Sam? Right you are, little buddy. Into the oven it goes. And through the magic of TV cooking show time, ta-da, you've successfully perverted the laws of God and man. Oh boy, let's take it with us. Um... Hey, Sam, can I? No. Uh... Tub of lard? Book of lard? That's enough lard to clog the arteries of a major metropolis. Or start a circus of grease squirrels! I rue the day you lost your NEA funding, Max. to find something for the cards in the game show. I just don't see how you can sing and be a judge. I don't think the public would swallow that. Hey, Sam, do my eyes deceive me, or are those our formerly hypnotized former child star acquaintances, the Soda Poppers? Sweet jellyfish paste on a stick, you're right. What are the odds? Could we find another judge? What about one of those guys? Hmm. I don't suppose either of you would be interested in being a judge on Embarrassing Idol, the hot new show where we make uncomfortable entertainment out of people's misplaced faith in their ability. Oh, me, me! I promise I'll be completely unbiased in my abuse of the contestants. Fine, fine. Take a seat. Goody! I get to sing! Welcome back to Embarrassing Idol. The judges are chomping at the bit, so say hello to our first contestant, <laughs> Peepers. <laughs> Am I blue? Who are you? Can I fly? Well, that was a bit sloppy, but I particularly like how you hit that high note. That always impresses me. I think you'll get my vote. I'm definitely voting for you. After all, you are my brother. Very impressive. You sound almost exactly like a sick cat being dragged through rusty farm machinery. But this is a singing contest, so I think I'll have to vote for someone else. Um, is there anyone else? Not so far. Yay! Oh, I have to go to Strachan. Oh, how? Is that your mug? <coughs> no, I was here when I got here! Last week! Ew. Okay, so... <coughs> uh-uh. How do I distract him? Let's well, try. well. Peepers, you underdeveloped former non-psychotherapist you. What a treat to run across you again. I'm not sure if I ever properly thanked you for hitting me over the head recently. Repeatedly. No gratitude necessary. Just doing our jobs. Sure. Uh. How do you manage to hit those eardrum scarring high notes? If you're implying that I use any artificial vocal enhancements, I don't. What you hear is pure peepers. That's almost exactly what I would have said. Your lyrics have an intriguingly vapid quality. Did you write them yourself? Of course! Any similarity to lyrics from other wildly popular songs is meant as homage, not theft. I'm dying to know. Is there any truth to the rumors about lip-syncing on the old Soda Poppers TV show? We only did that on the released version. Really, is there any trick to hitting the high notes like you do? Look, I told you, I don't use any artificial vocal enhancement, and I resent the implication. I have a gift, that's all. So, I'm going to... I'll leave you to whatever it is you're doing over here. Good luck! 
I... can I? Do I still have it? I do. Let's, uh, see if crying is... Ah! Oh, why did you do that? I'm not really sure. It was, at the very least, fun. Um... No thanks. Can I look at these? Sure, take them! I've got them memorized! Am I blue? Who are you? Can I fly? Very impressive. Okay, so I need to go back to the... Uh, no, that's the way out. Not click out of the window too would be a good plan. Game show door. No, Medics. You... Life. Heard this commercial. Yeah. Ah, uh, stop that. I have nothing to say about that. Hugh Bliss. Hi, Hugh Bliss. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. That's what we said. I need Challenge to change you to change any colors, colors again. Through. Okay, pick a color. Any color. Let's go back to white. Return to your usual albina queue. Wow. See you. Bye. And let's go and take the cards. No. Put them in the card slot. Hey, a perfect fit. <coughs> and let's cheat. We've got another contestant. Hit it. Welcome back. Our next contestants are these guys again. Okay, are you ready? Hmm. The question is, am I blue? Nope. No, oh, Hugh, you're not blue. Oh dear! Oh me, oh my! That's absolutely right! Yes. Congratulations! You're a millionaire! We're rich! Filthy rich! We just went bankrupt, so we will not be back after these messages. Well, this is awkward, but we don't actually have a million in cash. Sweet mother of all quiz show scandals. We'll have to give you a million dollars worth of food stamps. We're right over there. Hold on. Can you buy deep fried licorice rubs with food stamps? We'll take it. One, two, three, 174, 175, 999,999. And a million. Let's go spend it, Sam. It's burning a hole in my pocket. It's putting quite a bulge in mine. So, not Milltown Cowboys. Nope, not Myra. Let's go back to Midtown Cowboys. Convenient. This way we can shoot a T and if the show explode, best leave it turned. Let's skip that. Not to your camera. Is this thing on. There's the Telltale Games uh, card table from uh, Poker Night.
And let's exit. Let's go get Bosco's voice enhancer. It's Saturn Max. I saw you on the telly. How do you watch TV from in there? I've got monitors you don't even know about. Okay, so. Hello, sir. What ho, old bees? We want to buy something. We want to buy something. Wait, so. We come bearing one million American dollars. Now hand over the voice modulator. Blimey! Food stamps? I suppose I must accept them. Both the dash government conspiracy. It's hogwash. Complete codswallop. Here then is your chemical-based voice modulator. This is a helium balloon strapped to an inhaler. But it works. Trust me, trust me. Holy chipmunk, Ari is warbling out of a souped-up 78-speed turntable. It works. Thanks, Bosco. Where are we going, Sam? TV okay. studio. Buddy! <coughs> There's only one place to go, I don't know why they ask. What's with the pool of water? It's acid, Brain Freeze. Don't you ever watch the show? Hey, can I try my pipes out on this thing? Go right ahead. Frankly, we can use all the contestants we can muster. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next contestant, Sam. Hello. I'd like to do a little song I call... Um... Busted Down Hound Dog Blues. <coughs> May the starfish justice not impugn. Thinking about the rings on the great racket. Blowing like a zephyr on a dune. Let's hear from our judges. Bravo! Your wobbly tenor is way better than Peeper's shrill squawking. Your stylings are quite interesting, but I noticed you never really hit a high note. Peeper's is still getting my vote. You sing beautifully, and your lyrics are enchanting. But Peeper's is my brother, so I pretty much have to vote for him. Aww. Remember, folks, on Embarrassing Idol, the decision of the judges must be unanimous. Stay tuned for more exciting action after this. So... Work. It's okay to sing again if you want to, by the way. Could improve your chances. So, yeah. Um, I gotta go talk to Pete, uh, Wizard and find out what he wants, because... <sighs> yeah, controlling it is sometimes a little annoying.
tell me, old judge, what gruesome qualities do you look for in a singing performance? Fraternity! I'm voting for Peepers no matter what! He's my brother! The one who didn't forget my birthday today, I might add! I said I was sorry! What kind of perks go with this gig? Do you get fancy dressing rooms and candy sorted by color? Ooh, craft services food! Have them bring me a roasted Canada goose stuffed with lightly bruised olives, please. Not likely. I ordered a cake for my birthday, but they never brought it. I think the craft services crew all went in to watch the Myra show, like everybody else. All we got was a basket of tomatoes. Ugh. What kind of preposterously un-American weasel are you that you don't like tomatoes? I like them just fine. But they don't like me. What do you mean? I once spent 12 hours in the bathroom after mistakenly eating a cucumber that was sitting next to a tomato on the plate. Say no more. Can you eat those little cherry tomatoes? They're small. No! No tomatoes, tomato juice, tomato paste, nothing, or I'll be out of commission for hours. There's our target. Happy birthday! Thanks! I'm glad somebody remembered! I said I was sorry! What more do you want? A treat would be nice! Isn't this also St. Boniface Day? Patron saint of carnivorous plants and spiky things? I think that's next week. Okay, so I can- Oh, you're judging. Catch you later. Uh-huh. So, what I need to do... Is see what I can find around here. I don't think. Oh, maybe the cooking show door. Let's go down here to the ingredients. That's quite an assortment. They must have scoured every toxic waste dump in the state. Um, okay, so we're gonna... Welcome once again to Cooking Without Looking, the show where we use absolutely no natural ingredients whatsoever and still make something you guys can choke down. Filling in for the inconveniently food poison Chuck Flagon, these guys. Thank you, and welcome to the show. What are we making this time, Sam? We're making a cake. Today we're baking a cake. Let's visit our rack of ingredients and add flavoring to the flavoring pail. I'm pretty sure that's a pot, Sam. Max, let's leave the cooking to me and the eating to you. Okay. Paste. Well, we're going to no uranium pellets. The uranium pellets. They also go great in Chex Mix. Every she... chef has a signature ingredient that no one has ever heard of or used. Mine's MSG. If you put in enough that you feel a burning sensation in the back, you're just about there. Make sure to include red dye number two. Uh, There's not I at think least some possibility of malignant tumors. It's not real bachelor cooking. And one that I didn't do before. Um, lard. Don't skimp on the lard. That's right. If you take the lard out of lard ass, all you have is ass. Well said, Max. And then we're going to cook it. We've already got that thing we made before. Oh, I ate it while you were looking at the ingredients. Now, do we broil it, Sam? Right you are, little buddy. Into the oven it goes. And, through the magic of TV cooking show time, one gorgeous, delicious cake, ready to be binged upon or shared amongst friends. Boy, let's take it with us! I think that's what I need to do. I think. Could be wrong. I think it's the red dye number two. Okay. 
Uh, let's see about the cake for Wizard. How about some cake? Cake? Oh boy! Perfect for my birthday! There's no tomatoes in it, right? Nope. Ow! <laughs> Excuse me. Ah, that was delicious. And a little bit scary. You eat like Max. Um. Okay, apparently well, I judging. do need something to tomato like uh -huh. that isn't just um. I'm not entirely sure where I'm gonna get tomatoes. Oh, I think I know where I'm getting tomatoes. Actually, I don't think I have anything that is cup-like. Ketchup, mustard, and purple stuff. As vaguely referred to on TV! Oh, how do I get the ketchup? Is there... There's cups there, but I can't take any of those. What's on the shelf? With liverwurst. Awesome! Absolutely not. <laughs> Do not blame you at all. Uh, I don't think there's anything in our... I don't see anything. Let us take any of that. Oh, I know how I need to do it. I gotta go back and make a cake. Where are we going, Sam? TV studio. Goody! I know where I have to go. I have to go to the cooking show. Show. Then I need to do this. Welcome once again to cooking with whatsoever. Okay, and so let's and skip through this. Thank you. And we'll are we making it? We're making a cake again. Today we're baking a cake. Let's visit our rack of ingredients and add flavoring to the flavoring pail. I'm pretty sure that's a pot, Sam. Max, let's leave the cooking to me and the eating to you. A pink mink oil. Of pink mink oil is a must. Nothing says I last ate real food in the 80s like the inclusion of something pink. Um. Wombat secretions. Pinch or two of wombat secretions. Make sure they're lightly damp to the touch. The wombats, not the secretions. 
Hi, right, my Frankel. See you in a bit. Um, hair gel. Of course, you're going to want a few dashes of hair gel. Don't worry, bachelors. As long as you use it only for cooking, no one will think you less of a man. And let's bake it. Now, do we broil it, Sam? Right you are, little buddy. Into the oven it goes. And, through the magic of TV cooking showtime, one gorgeous, delicious cake. Ready to be binged upon or shared amongst friends. Oh boy, let's take it with us. Yep, and uh, not fridge. This fridge isn't even a... F I know. Let's go. And back through the sitcom. And embarrassing idle door. And we are heading back to Bosco's. So yeah, I didn't need to add some icing to the cake. Now, this cake needs a little bit of condiments. A little ketchup is always good on a cake. Then, we'll disqualify a judge. But before we do that, I'm going to take a quick break. So I will be right back.
so back we are and uh do that. Where are we going, Sam? There's only one place to go, why do you ask? TV studio. Woody! Happy birthday! Oh boy! Birthday cake! That red frosting looks tasty! <laughs> boy, that was really... Oh, uh, uh, really, really... Uh, uh oh. Time out for number two! He'd better not be going to see Myra. Well, anyway, we can't wait. We'll just have to finish the show with only two judges. Whatever you guys agree on goes. Vote for me! Okay, so let's go here. I think I have to use um, this on the actual microphone. No dice. Okay, no me. can do. Testing, one, two, three. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next contestant, Sam. Hello. I'd like to do a little song I call... Busted Down Hound Dog Blues. <clears throat> May the starfish justice not impugn. He's the headline, page one, the Tribune. <coughs> Road to someday, bits of me are strewn. Let's hear from our judges. I admire your courage even more than your singing. You've still got my vote. Thanks, little buddy. You really nailed that high note. Whoa! And you're less sloppy than my brother is. You've got my vote. Hey! All of the remaining judges have agreed. We have a winner. No. Congratulations, Sam. Here's your recording contract. In Bottom Records. It's like a dream come true. Specs, I'll get you for this if it's the last thing I do! Right after I get back from Mount Rushmore. Rushmore? I'd better go after him. I just remembered. I have to feed my goldfish. Are we still taping? Uh, be sure to join us next time on Embarrassing Idol! <laughs> so, I have just won a good recording contract. Um, I think I needed to be on my, I guess, a guest on my... So, done the cooking show, got the tape, uh, uh, I needed to be green, so I, Hi, Hugh Bliss. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. I challenge you to change colors again. Okay, pick a color. Any color. It's not easy being green. Oh, but it is with magic. Ah. Hey, and the 
photo with you. How about another picture, you bless? How about this? Instead of a new picture, we'll just recycle the old one. Save the Earth! Sure, whatever. Gather around! Bye! Okay, so... Smacking Max around for the fun of it. Pretty sure I have to go back to, um... Hey, bossy. Fascinating. Not really. It's got a falling star on it. How appropriate. <laughs> There's a burn. Sam, this is perfect. This photo is a capstone. It succinctly summarizes over 30 years of extraterrestrial related photographic evidence. Sybil, that photo was a hoax. Exactly. I couldn't have asked for better. Now I can print the paper. Available at newsstands now. are famous. Hooray! Can we begin misbehaving now? Again? <laughs> okay, that very much would be the statement I would be saying. Where are we going, Sam? TV studio. Goody! It's polite to knock. You do know we're taping a show here. Great day in the morning. It's Myra Stump herself! Yourself. Um... Can we come in and see the show? Can you? Don't you mean... May we come in and see the show? That's much better. No, we're at full capacity. The only people getting in now are famous people who are appearing on the show. Can we be guests on your show? Can't... May we appear as guests on your show? I excel at talking about myself! Are you famous? Perhaps. In an internet petition, or there ought to be a law kind of way. Not good enough. 
I'll need evidence of your explosive star power. Blew up a public restroom last week. I want to see a copy of your recording contract, for one thing. Well, what if we... Recording, contract, and a clip from your hit TV show. You're not anybody these days if you don't act and sing. Recording contract, TV clip. Piece of cake. No cake. I'm on a diet. But I will naturally need evidence of the latest juicy scandal you've been involved in. We have to be scandalized? Of course! What kind of show do you think this is? Are you sure you want us to answer that? Look, it's very simple. Show me a recording contract, a clip from your TV show, and some evidence of a scandal, and I'll squeeze you in. Oh, is that all? You do have a recording contract. Ben Bottom Records. Take a look. Now how about having us appear on your show? Not so fast. To get on my stage, you'll also need a clip from your own TV show as well as evidence of a good scandal. Fame is a distressingly exact mistress. There you go, dear. Although I strongly disapprove, having a mistress is an excellent start to a scandal. The public enjoys a good love triangle. As it happens, we brought a clip of our wacky hit sitcom, Midtown Cowboys. We're the stars. Hmm. Your celebrity is becoming less and less marginal all the time. Don't worry, Myra. We're still marginal at heart. Yes, I suspected as much. But get yourselves involved in a newsworthy scandal, and you can be guests. Actually, we grace the cover of the current edition of the Alien Love Triangle Times. How's that for a scandal? You'll have us on your show now, yes? Oh, I suppose so. If only so I can talk about America's lamentably endless fascination with depravity. Yay! Naturally, I will expect you to be on your best behavior and agree with everything I say and answer every question I have and don't interrupt and keep your elbows off the table and use your indoor voice. What about... While you're on my show, you stay in your seats at all times. You do not interrupt me when I'm talking and you treat the audience with the utmost respect, even if you become less sure with each passing year that they deserve it. Now, I'll call you on stage in a minute. Gosh, Max. Celebrity is just a never-ending set of arbitrary goals one accomplishes to appease a dismissive and distracted, if not entirely absent, authority figure. I don't know if I agree, Sam, but I've begun my decadent slide into a depraved personal hell just in case. Give her a hand, everyone! Bessie Bovine reading from her new book, The Heart Has Four Stomachs, Ruminations on a Life in Hollywood, out now in all major bookstores. This microphone is starting to spark from overuse, but that doesn't mean we're ready to pack it in. We've got the stars of the not-quite-canceled sitcom Midtown Cowboys, who also happen to be the winner and judge of TV's Embarrassing Idol. Ladies and gentlemen, Sam and Matt. Hold the hayride, little pal. That bear seems more than slightly hinky, in the mesmeric sense of the term. Shadier than a fat man's ankles. Let's take it down like ducks in a gutter. Hold it! My guests sit at that end! But that bear has got you. Sit! We'll just sit where you want us to, ma'am. Lovely. What gives, Sam? Why can't we just grab the bear? It would appear that the laws of physics are different on the set of a talk show, little buddy. We're gonna have to play along. Sam and Max, you talented, hot new celebrities who've taken the entertainment world by storm. So naturally, we all want to hear everything about your involvement in the scandal detailed in the Alien Love Triangle Times. I'd like to talk about that charming yet mildly insidious looking bear on your desk. Can I see it? I don't know, Sam. Can you? <laughs> may I see it, please? No, you may not. And if I may say so, if there's one thing that grills my chicken, it's how our culture is in a state of modal decay. Can is not the same as may. Should is not the same as blah, blah, blah. Yuck, blah, 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 blue, blue, blue. Hopefully she'll be off on her tri-state nagging spree for a while. Blah, 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 yak, 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 bloody, 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 yakety, 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 yak, blah, 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 blah. 
Blah, 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 blah. She accused yak, him. Yak, yak, Plenty yak, to yak, say bloody, already. Bloody, 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 yakety, 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 yak, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Yak, 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 yak. Unwise in front of a live studio audience. Yakety, 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 yak, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Yak, put that away right now. Blah 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 yak 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 bloody 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 yakety 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 yak blah 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 bl
I think scandalous affair of yours. There's something you should know about that picture in the Times. I'm not sure I want to know anything more. Maybe you big Hollywood types thinks it's funny to flaunt your polyplanetary pickups, but the rest of us find alien love triangles, frankly, disgusting. But the photo is not quite what it seems. How so? Which is really funny. Um... It doesn't tell the whole story. There's someone else involved. Someone the picture doesn't show. How shocking. Who? Philo Pennyworth. Philo Pennyworth. As I'm sure most of you know, Philo Pennyworth is the actor who plays Mr. Featherly on Midtown Cowboys. And we happen to have him backstage. Let's bring him out. Philo, give us your side. Is it true? Myra, please, of course not. I'm a veteran of the British stage. I'd never be caught cavorting with a dog, a rabbit, and an alien. It's so 1997. Yikes! I doubt we'll hear a more terrifying denial. This year, anyone who is anyone is all about birds of prey, ring-tailed lemurs, and Bigfoot. No one will ever take you seriously at the Globe Theatre otherwise. And there you have it. I'm so shocked, I'm going to talk for at least the next five minutes about blah, 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 yak, yak, yak. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so that's what we need Scandalous to do. affair of yours. We need to check, select the right, uh... There's more you should know about. What's that? There are still others involved. <gasps> Incredible. Who? Bessie the Cow. Bessie Bovine, our co-star on Midtown Cowboys. Oh my! Audience, shall we bring her back out again? At the risk of making the obvious comment, that was shocking! Is she breathing? A little, but the creepy teddy bear is toast. Nuts! I wanted to ask it a few questions, and maybe use it to hypnotize Katie Couric. Another glorious dream bangs its chin on the dirty pavement. On the bright side, the audience is free to go home. Oh, I was just getting warmed up. Do you think Myra will have us back on the show again soon? Um, speaking of unlikely, did you notice we just had two cases in a row involving hypnotic mind control? Complete coincidence? Yes, I think so. The cogs of the universe synchronize in ways we're not meant to see. Speaking of things we're not meant to see, there's a new restaurant at the zoo where you can eat what they feed the animals. Empty popcorn cartons and cigarette butts. And processed bread logs loaded with tranquilizers and antidepressants. Bread logs make me logy. Let's head back to the cooking show set and see if we can figure out how to make fried pork rinds. Okay, but I get the feet. You think the Toy Mafia may be involved? Well, that's the end of uh, episode two, and that's going to be, once the credits finish rolling, the end of the stream for today. Um, these are... I'm sorry, these things just make me laugh. They're hilarious. And I'm going to be giggling through the rest of them, too. So, we... Uh, Went and cheated our way through several TV shows, got ourselves onto a uh, talk show, and electrocuted the host and her hypnotizing mayor. Enters like that that the toy mafia sent the, the bear to, to Myra in the first place. So we'll get to see how that goes in episode 3, which will be next Thursday. I'm gonna cut out here, and thank you for watching. Thank you.